I'm so lucky to have Dr. Bokikio here to talk about exercise and metabolic health for my Boost Your Metabolic Health program. Dr. Bokikio is a world-renowned fitness expert as well as an exercise physiologist and is so well-versed in exercise, especially as it relates to the keto and low-carb lifestyle. So I'm gonna ask him a couple questions before we go into his actual workout that he has developed called the SMART program. Welcome, thank you. Thank you, Laura. And everybody calls me Dr. Ben because Bokikio is not that easy to say, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, Dr. Ben. Yeah. So we're gonna start out and I'm gonna ask him how he defines metabolic health. This is a metabolic health program and a lot of people define it differently, but I would like to know from his perspective, how do you define metabolic health from an exercise standpoint? Well, from any standpoint, metabolic health, first of all, most people don't really know what metabolism means, okay? Metabolism is just all the chemistry that happens in your body, building up cells, breaking down cells, using energy, storing energy. So all the chemistry, all the stuff that happens in your body is metabolism, okay? So metabolic health means that all of those functions that uh, derive and, and drive us to that end point of being chemically healthy and solid, okay, and not unhealthy or ill uh, would, would be what defines metabolic health, okay? So how is, in other words, metabolic health is different than uh, sickness as far as a disease or an injury or something like that. Metabolic is how is your body functioning? How is your chemistry? Uh, is everything okay? Are you degenerating? Are you youthful? That, that's really what metabolic health is all about. Right, that's how I see it too, as a highly functioning metabolism, all working yeah. properly. And, Good chemistry. Right, right. So can you tell me a little bit about your SMART program that you developed in terms of how, what it, what it entails and how it relates to sure. improving metabolic health? Yeah, okay, so years ago, um, I was always an exerciser and I was in charge of exercise programs and developed exercise programs, but I understood and it was obvious uh, to observe that um, a lot of things that people did under the guise of exercise were actually non-productive or counterproductive. In other words, they were actually hurting themselves or not getting a benefit. So I tried to develop a program and, and the acronym SMART means slow maximum response training. All I want to do is one thing. First, I want the exercise to be safe. Secondly, I want it to be productive. Then I want it to be efficient because there are three reasons people don't exercise. I don't have time. I'm afraid I'm going to get hurt and I don't get results. So if you don't have 15 minutes twice a week, then I don't know if I can help you, okay? As far as getting hurt, no one's gotten hurt in 50 years, and I've trained world-class athletes and had very powerful, strong people, and also rehab patients do this. No one's gotten hurt. And as far as being productive uh, right away, it's self-motivating because within three or four 15-minute workouts, most people see and feel a difference. So it's smart training. I, I kind of cleverly call it, it's smart training because number one, it's not stupid. <laughs> right. So I know that it's the, the type of exercise that you do is referred to as high intensity. And right. I think that that scares a lot of people off because they think I can't do it. It's going to be too hard. There's no way I can do something that's considered high intensity. I think a lot of people think high intensity is going on a treadmill and doing sprints for 20 seconds, a hundred times. And that's not actually what this exercise is. So what do you mean in terms of high intensity? Okay. High intensity is a misunderstood term. Um, by definition, there's, there's a, a HIIT, high intensity interval training. Mm -hmm. By definition, if the exercise is high intensity, it has to be interval. If it's high intensity, you can't sustain it. Okay, that, that's just self-regulating, okay? So high intensity means really, for our purposes, working at a level that the body is not used to or the muscle group is not used to. Now, it depends. If I have a person who's sedentary, hasn't exercised in 50 years, very little. Getting up from this chair three or four times could be a high intensity leg right. session because it recruits the muscle fibers that we consider high intensity fibers. Okay. So whatever it takes at whatever level you are momentarily in the, when that muscle group. Okay. That's what high intensity is working harder because we're trying to recruit these muscle fibers without getting too deep in the weeds, muscle fibers that instigate and perpetuate the highest return for our bang for our time and effort. Okay. That's high intensity. So High intensity can be literally, I have people getting up and down from a chair four times and that's their high intensity leg workout. They can take a very simple band and row with a weight they can do. And if they get to that point where they have to recruit those life or death, fight or flight muscle fibers, and it could be two or three repetitions, which we would observe to be 
very little work, but for them, it's high intensity. So it's relative. Anyone can do it. I've trained world-class athletes. I've trained rehab patients. I've trained people in wheelchairs, uh, kids, older people. High intensity is subjective. It doesn't necessarily mean, excuse me, that it's difficult or which it, it's demanding. It doesn't mean that it's painful. It doesn't mean that it's exhausting. It can be all of those things, but that's not what defines high intensity. Great. That's a, that's a great definition. It's all relative to where you're yeah. starting out and, and where you can go. Um, so can we discuss a little bit about exercise versus activity? Yeah, that's, a, that's one, of my, um, one of the craws in my hat here. Um, high, uh, exercise and activity, in my mind, are two separate and distinctive disciplines or um, issues. Exercise is formal, organized, has objectives that are physiological kind of objectives. What are we trying to do? And it's a specific way to, to recruit or stimulate muscle fiber response, okay? Activity is basically a, anything that we do that's not sedentary. Sedentary behavior. If we sat in this chair for four hours a day, twice, you know, m morning and night, that would be considered sedentary. And that in and of itself is a health risk, right. a, a, equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. So we want to do something that offsets sedentary behavior. I call that activity. Sports, cycling golf, tennis, yoga, some of these things, taken to a level that is not super demanding, but you, know, you work up a little bit of a sweat. So whatever relatively gets you to that level of not being sedentary is considered activity. Exercise, on the, on the other hand, is formal. It's uh, at a high level of concentration. It's focused. It has specific objectives. And it's usually not easy, and it takes a, a couple of days to recover from that. Not that you're exhausted, but we're talking about metabolically, chemically recover to be ready to stimulate an upward uh, response to the next workout. Right, and that recovery is very important. Absolutely. In terms of, 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 your, right. of your metabolic system recovering. Yeah. The analogy the is this, if I wanna get a suntan, I don't go into the sun in the middle of the day, five hours a day, five days in a row. Can't respond, that's too much stimulus, okay? So the same thing with this exercise. Once we initiate this metabolism, this chemistry, it takes a while in the most elite athlete or the most sedentary person, it takes a while so that we are ready to now, again, upwardly instigate some kind of response. We have to allow the recovery. That's just as important as the stimulation, the exercise. Great. I like that because a lot of people worry about that they're not working out every day. Yeah, and and when, I do, when I do this twice a week, I know that I have to let my body recover. So yeah. I'm not so concerned about having to exercise all the time. But I do my activity in between. I walk my dog. Sure. I play sports. No, and we I want do you to be activity. active and then do your exercise a couple times a week. Think about historically as a species. If we had to take down a wild boar or a woolly mammoth every day, we would be exhausted and after 10 days we would become the prey because we couldn't move, we'd be too exhausted, okay? So this is this whole, this is this stuff is hardwired into our genes, okay? This is how this, the population of the species propagated by doing this. So we're kind of replicating that kind of genetic dictate. Good. And Let's talk a little bit about aerobic exercise versus this high intensity training. I know you talk about aerobic exercise as fat borrowing, borrowing whereas the high intensity training is really fat burning. Can you talk about that a little sure. bit? Um, right now, when we're sitting or watching the video, or whatever we're doing, there is fat being circulated from storage, triglyceride, to what we call free fatty acids. So it goes from storage to usage to storage to, in a cycle. That dictates basically our metabolic rate a little bit. How much, how are we using energy? So this is happening constantly, uh, sleeping, okay? When we do aerobic exercise, it's called steady state exercise. And by definition, it means it doesn't make much of an inroads into your metabolism. It's, we can sustain it. And as a species, we can walk about 3.4 to 3.7 miles an hour, almost 80% of us most efficiently. So aerobic exercise is an efficient use of already circulating energy. And we know that we create a deficit because we've borrowed some of this energy for the walk or for the activity. And at the end of this activity or aerobic exercise, what happens? The body becomes tired and it's hungry. Mm -hmm. So we slow down metabolically, we use fewer calories, and we eat more because the body's stimulated to, to, to drive energy. So what happens? The net effect is basically zero. And, and the studies show that aerobic cardiovascular exercise is basically not a very good way to lose body fat. In fact, it doesn't work. So the people who want to do more and more and more and more to burn more and more calories are basically making more and more inroads into the recovery. And the net effect is they just beat themselves up and then they start to use uh, lean tissue as energy, 
which and and produce cortisol, which is a stress hormone, which reduces the ability to gain. Uh, I'm sorry, to lose fat. So high intensity exercise. When we do this high intensity exercise, we get an adrenaline response. Don't forget, we're using this fight or flight fuel called glycogen at a high rate. Your brain says, "Whoa, I don't have any backup in case an emergency continues." So it draws fat out of storage. So stored body fat is really where we want to go, not using circulating body fat. Now we draw fat out of storage as a backup for this emergency. And when we get done with that exercise, we continue to burn that stored fat, okay? Because our metabolism up, this is circulating through the system. And so our metabolic rate is increased and we now draw from fat storage. And we're not hungry and we're not tired. You know, anybody that has an adrenaline response knows they're they're moving like this because right. they have so much energy, it, right. it makes the muscles contract. So it, it's just a much more efficient way. In fact, it's the only real way that exercise or physical activity is going to burn fat efficiently 24-7. That's great. And lastly, I think what's really important is for my metabolic health program, I introduce the ketogenic lifestyle. We get keto adapted. We get fat adapted. I introduce intermittent fasting. Right. And then I will introduce the, the high intensity training as kind of that last metabolic component of my program if people are not already exercising. If, if they're new to exercise and I wait a little bit until there's some adaptation before the okay. exercise is introduced. But can we talk about how high intensity training is synergistic sure. with what, with the, the metabolic effects of keto or low, a low carb lifestyle? How are they, right. how does it complement them and how, do, how does it actually build upon what the ketogenic lifestyle is already doing metabolically? Okay. For most people, the ketogenic diet is a way to basically organize their stored energy, which means organized fat storage, okay, and all the chemistry involved in that, the hormonal responses, the physical activity, all of these things come into effect. So any activity, any behavior that we do drives these chemical responses, okay? So ketogenic diets uh, allow us at some point in time to use stored fat as energy. I, mean, I just described how we can use stored fat on an acute basis, okay, by doing this exercise. So the metabolic pathways that we're trying to instigate, which any drug or any behavior or any kind of a diet or any exercise program is really bottom line trying to drive, we can drive together. So the responses that we drive with ketogenic diet, for example, insulin sensitivity, is driven by the fact that the exercise, high intensity exercise, downloads uh, uh, the insulin um, response okay so what happens is if you drive all this glycogen out of storage in this high intensity exercise now the receptors that have to store glycogen again are ready to store it so our blood sugars decrease we don't need as much insulin because those receptors on the muscle cells are saying give me more sugar so now so insulin resistance keto high intensity exercise stored fat burning keto high intensity exercise resting metabolic rate keto high intensity exercise. Right. So all of these processes, all of these metabolic actions that we're trying to induce can be magnified and synergistically, meaning one and one equals three. If we do these things separately, think of fat as a big candle and we're burning it at one end with keto. I wanna burn it at both ends so we, we double the effect. Now there are some things that keto can do that uh, more prominently than exercise, but there are a lot of things that high intensity exercise can do that keto can't, okay, but some of them. HGH responses, a human growth hormone, uh, reduces visceral fat, increases metabolic rate, increases muscle mass. Oh, I can go into a list of these things, but these are numerous. And that combination has proven to me in 50 years of practice to be very successful, very healthy. That's great. Well, with that, let's uh, start our workout.